So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Yoga Therapy. Today we're working with legs and feet again, and uh, today we're going to be working a little bit more into the upper legs as we transition towards the hips next week. So just start by bringing your feet together and perhaps squeezing your thighs together and pulling up. Notice how that feels to so squeeze your legs together and exhale, release. We'll add some arm movement. Inhale, arms to the side. Squeeze the legs together. Lift up the knees if that feels comfortable. And exhale, release. So this is with my legs together. You can alternatively put a block between your legs. Inhale. And exhale. Start bringing the arms a little higher. This is for upper back, neck, and shoulders. A lot of you have that. Notice if palms up or down feels best for you. Exhale. You can cross your hands, touching the opposite thighs. Inhale, coming up. This time I'm going to try with my palms down, for example. Pull up. Notice if one knee is a little harder to pull up on. Exhale, release. Just bothering your knees, do not pull up on them. It's an option. I'm just gonna let someone in, just trying to get in, keep going. Oh, someone else is trying to get in. Okay. Just keep this going. We're waiting for some others to join. And just finishing up, let's bring the arms all the way up and coming up onto the toes if that's comfortable. Exhale, coming down. If this is hard for you, you can put a belt, you can try it, you can hold a wall, or you can have one ankle that's um, not as strong as the other. You can put a belt on your ankles and see holding onto a wall or a chair and see if that helps. So this is a way to work with really strengthening your ankles and put your focus on your ankles. You might not like it, but you might like it. So this helps the strong side help the weak side if you've got one ankle that's weaker than the other. You always bend the knees as you exhale. And then we're going to stay at the top. And we're going to breathe here. If it's not comfortable staying, go up and down. And when you're ready, gradually coming down. You can leave that belt if you have it on the ankles or not. Inhale, arms coming up. We're going to move into a lot of side movement today. You can come up on the toes or not. And exhale, coming towards your left. If you want to challenge yourself, keep up on the toes as long as possible. At the end of the exhale, coming down. So get a deeper side stretch. And if you're working more with your hip uh, QL area, you can stick your hip out. Some of you are in that situation. Inhale, arms coming up. And again, if you've got some shoulder issues, you can bring one arm down. You can bend the top arm. There's some variations you can do there to make it feel more comfortable for your body. Or just keep the arms lower. hold opposite elbows. I personally love this variation for my neck and shoulders. So just those arms to comfort, just the legs to comfort.
And next round, we're going to stay on each side. To stay here and breathe. As you inhale, try to align your shoulders. If you're holding elbows, align those elbows. And exhale, draw the belly in from the pelvic floor up to the belly button. Inhale center, you can always release your arms if you have any tingling. And exhale other side, staying here. You might do one variation on the one side and another on the other if you've got different things going on. For example, scoliosis, you might on one side stretch the arm long on a side that's compressed and on the other side bend the elbows. So Keep that in mind. Keep drawing that belly in as you exhale. And sticking the hip out if it's comfortable. Feeling that going perhaps into the IT band even. Inhale, center. And exhale, coming down. I'm going to do an opening meditation, hands of the heart. I'm just going to chant the Patanjali invocation. This is traditionally chanted at the beginning of classes in my tradition. If you like, you can think of an image of Ananta. So this Patanjali, one of the names for him is Ananta, which means balance or infinite harmony. So you can think of an image of harmony if you like, or you can think of Patanjali himself if you know what he looks like. Yogena <laughs> Adena Pacha Malam Sharia Rasya Chavai Jakena Yo Pakaro Tam Pravaram Munena Patanjali Pranjali Rana Tosmi Abahu Guru Shakaram Shanka Chakra Sitarinam Sahasra Shirasam Shwetam Pranamami Patanjalim Shri Mate Anandaya Nagarajaya Namo Namaha You can repeat this last part, Namo Namaha means I surrender, I let go, I allow. Namo namaha. Madha, draw your belly in. Mahapranam. Namo namaha. Namo namaha. I'm bringing your left foot forward in your right back. And I'm going to use a chair today for this, but you can go to the floor. So I'll show with both, of course. Heel to heel alignment approximately. Inhale, arms coming up. Straight ahead. Exhale, stretching nice and long. And you could bring your hands also to the wall this pose that actually feels really nice when I just show that for the first one inhale coming up 
Exhale forward, you can bring your hands to the back of the chair. Drawing the belly in, you can release the neck and shoulders at the end of the exhale. Inhale, if it's comfortable, move your arms first in line with the ears. Otherwise, bring your arms sides if this is not comfortable for your neck and shoulders. Exhale forward, bend. Next step, perhaps hands to the seat of the chair, maybe your head to the seat of the chair. You could have a bunch of blocks that you bring your head to. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, forward bend. And then the last step is hands to blocks or hands to the floor. Look at your alignment of your feet, heel to heel alignment, feel the outer edge of that back foot. When you're ready, just staying down in your pose, the hands on the chair, hands on the floor, hands on blocks, hands on the wall, so whatever you choose. And keep it going up and down or just stay here. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen the spine, try to bring the ribcage forward. You can actually draw it forward with your hands on the base. Lengthen that spine, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. This is creating grounding, that Om Namo Namaha, letting go. Letting go of your worries, your problems, your concerns, whatever they are. Just letting go and coming into the moment. Suggesting pose for comfort of the body and the mind. If you don't feel safe, just move to a different position. Maybe just stay in the pose for a couple of breaths without moving. Stretch in the legs, lower back, back hip coming up. You can always bend that front knee. Exhale, bend, inhale, step back. Just take a moment in samastiti, even standing pose. Squeeze those thighs together, perhaps. Place the hands on the belly. Exhale, draw the belly in from the pelvic floor up. Maybe hold after exhale for a moment. Just feel that apana vayu working, that downward flow of energy. Inhale, expand the belly. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in. And then maybe scoop the stomach in and up a little bit. That's Uriyana Bandha. Stomach lock. Hope you didn't eat a big breakfast. So before yoga, a couple hours before you can have like yogurt or something small like that, nothing too strong. And when you're ready, other side, we're going to bring the right foot forward in one step. Turning that left foot out, you can always turn the left foot out first and then step forward if balance is an issue. Inhale, arms coming up. And exhale, bring your hands as you lie to your place. So for example, to the wall, the back of the chair, the seat of the chair, the blocks, or all the way to the floor. Just gonna show a few of those as a reminder. Just do your own pose now. Pull up. On that front leg, you can pull up on the thigh. Notice how that affects the stretch into the back of the legs. 
you might find different heights as I'm doing this, actually different heights, I'm reminded that it stretches the leg differently, that front leg, different heights. When you've done round six, you can start sit, staying in the forward bend and moving just the chest up and down. When you inhale, you can grab the ribs in the front, draw them up and see if you can lengthen the lower back by doing that. It's a nice one to do with blocks under your hands or hands on the chair. In that around four to six times, can you just stay in the pose and breathe? You can always keep it moving. If you have pain, you just keep it moving or take a break. Gradually coming up, you can always bend that front knee and use the chair for support. You can add the arms has weights as well. Exhale, stepping back. Finding your samastiti, your even standing pose. Notice how you feel. Hopefully your legs feel a little bit more awake. If you have problems with fallen arches. Let's just do that for a moment. We didn't talk about this last week. You can lift those toes up if you can. Try to lift them up, just the toes. And notice how your arches um, strengthen as you do that. And then exhale, release, bend the knees. Inhale, pulling up on those knees. I'm squeezing my glutes together as well, inner thighs today, just to Try to get into the hips a little bit, hip stabilizers, and exhale, release. I've been doing research on the deep six, they're called. They're the hip stabilizers of the lateral part of the hip. It's quite interesting. You need to strengthen and stretch them. We're going to work more on that next week, but we're going to start easing towards that today. Lift up those toes. How can you stay there for a breath? As a therapy at home, you could try um, tying your big toes together if you have a bunion or anything, big toes together with a, an elastic band, a big one, and uh, do this exercise. When you put toe spreaders on, that's another great way of working with the feet and release. That's to strengthen those ankles. Okay. So we're gonna move on. I'm gonna do a warm up for this first. So we're gonna do some uh, balances, easy, and then we're gonna go a little bit harder today. So get ready. I workshop this yesterday in my practice. Inhale, arms coming up in front of you. Palms facing forward. Now, if this is not comfortable, you can bring the arms side instead. Exhale, bring one leg up. I'm gonna bring your left. So it's my right, but it's your left. Now really stand on that opposite leg and bring your hands down by your hips. Inhale, both feet down, nice and tall. Did this last week. Exhale. We're gonna add a piece today. Inhale, so really stand tall on that standing leg. 
I bring my chin in as I inhale, my arms a little bit back. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in. So use the core to lift your leg. That feels really different than using the leg to lift the leg. Stand up on that opposite leg that's working those hip stabilizers I just mentioned. Really important for fall prevention. Activate from the pelvic floor up to the belly button. It's called mula, or the root, mula bandha, root lock in Sanskrit. Okay, we're going to move on if you're not too tired. Exhale. You can keep that going, or the, move, the next step, exhale, knee up. Now, inhale. Can you extend that leg a little bit or a lot? As the arms come up, exhale, bend in. I won't hold you there too long. And inhale, step down. Exhale, bend the leg, draw it up, stand on your standing left leg, draw the belly in. Inhale, extend out, if you can point the toes. Exhale, draw in, you might be feeling those quads work quite a bit. Only extend as much as is comfortable. And inhale up. We're gonna try to do two more rounds. If it's too much, take a break, exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Last round. Now, if you can, just use a straight leg or a bent leg this last round as you inhale and exhale. So your choice. I'm gonna just see if you can do that full piece. Let's do one more. I find this one a little bit harder. And you should be getting warm. And release. Whew. So now we're going to go to the side. Yeah, I'm seeing layers come off. I'm <laughs> feeling both the same way. Inhale, arms coming up to the sides. Exhale, bring your left leg to the side. And this time, keep your body straight up if you can, as you bring your hands down. Inhale, center. So I think last week we might have tipped to the side. So we're going to just try to stay straight up today. It's quite um, a lot more work for the hip when you do this. So this is definitely moving into the upper leg. Standing on one leg at a time. We'll do around six rounds. See how high you can go. You can always leave your foot on the ground. We talked about that last week. So you can always just slide your foot to the side. I'm just gonna show that, right? You can do that or bring it up. Notice one side's easier than the other. Two more rounds. Trying to pause between the inhale and the exhale. And let's just finish there. All right, we're going to take it to the back now. Got the chair here to use as a possible prop and the wall. So I'm going to show some variations on this. So I'm going to start really simple. So inhale, arms coming up. Exhale, bring your hands by your hips as you just point the foot back. So that might be your pose or 
you start tipping forward with your foot on the ground, or as you tip forward, you bring the leg up and the torso down to come forward and you stretch way back. Inhale, move the arms first, balancing on that one foot as long as possible, and then joining. Exhale, other side. Now you can keep that going, or you could try, some of you might prefer to have the arms at the sides, like an airplane, to give you better balance. And uh, actually you can use that wall behind you. I've just found that. That's also a nice prop. And you can go up and down from there. You can also use the wall in front and keep your arms straight in front or with a slight bend, which I'll show now. This probably is easier. Or the top of the chair. Or the seat of the chair. Or you can go to two blocks. This is really working on all the muscles of the legs, the ankles, the knees, the hips, the whole thing being used by this exercise. Let's just do one more round wherever you've decided to go to. Coming up is a little harder, eh? Working against gravity, that eccentric contraction. Okay, when you're done, come to your samastiti and see how you feel. You should be feeling quite balanced in mind and body right now. Uh, these are great to do when you're feeling out of balance emotionally. Do balance poses. They kind of just, um, they stimulate one side of the brain at a time. We know that. There's rhythmic movement, which is also very settling for the nervous system. Bilateral movement. And it, uh, they need concentration. So it's hard to be worrying about something when you're doing a balance pose. It forces you to be in the moment. So you can do handstands, of course, and all of those. Let's just rest here for a moment. And in this rest, like you to think of uh, a bhavana, something you want to infuse yourself in, an image, an idea linked to grounding. So it could be an image of a tree, could be a, a mantra or affirmation. Feel relaxed and grounded, for example. Pick one of those. And maybe you do a combination of both an affirmation or mantra and an image. Just let that bhavana infuse you.
when you're ready. Move into Uttanasana, two foot at four bend. Have your feet together or apart. You can do this with the chair, with uh, the wall, with blocks. So I'll show some of those versions for you or go all the way to the floor. Inhale, arms coming up in front or to the side. If your neck and shoulders feel better to the sides, use the sides. That's great for neck, shoulder injuries. Inhale, coming up. Exhale. You want to extend the upper body forward. The hips are coming back, but you're drawing up from the pelvic floor to the belly. So there will be a little rounding in the spine. You might come just to, for example, the back of the chair. You might notice my back's a bit rounded now. As you inhale, you're actually arching the back the other direction. And we're gonna take that break in between so we feel our feet exhale, Samastiti. Inhale, the arms coming up. Pulling up on those kneecaps, if that's comfortable for you. Noticing if one knee's different than the other, maybe your chin in, jowl down above the exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in. As you stretch the spine as long as you can, the upper back. And draw that apana region in, the belly region in. Inhale, you're gonna arch the spine. As you come up, exhale, release. So I'm showing just Ardha Uttanasana now, but you can do the whole thing. I'm doing just a half version. This is a good variation for blood pressure issues, eye issues. I'm gonna to go to the seat of the chair this time. You can always bend your knees as well. I haven't mentioned that today, but I think you all know that. You can always bend your knees as you come down. And that can be very therapeutic for the lower back. It gives it some traction. And then inhale, coming out with bend knees or straight. Take that break in between if you like. Samastiti and feel your feet on the ground. Take that moment just to feel your feet. Inhale. This time I'm going to go to the floor or I could go to my blocks. When we come up, if you're going all the way to the floor, move your arms first in line with your ears. If this is too much on your shoulders, bring your arms to the sides and up. Pull up on those kneecaps, exhale, samastiti. Find whatever version of this pose works for you. We're going to do one more round and then stay at the bottom. Come to the bottom if you can, scoop your stomach in. We're going to inhale, lift the chest like we did in the one sided version. Bring that rib cage forward. Feel the effect of that on the lower back. Exhale, try to keep the ribs, the belly on the thighs as you come forward. Inhale, doing the stitty. This is to lengthen the spine. And then exhale forward. Do that a few times or you might be ready to just stay. When you stay, you can hold your big toes with your peace fingers, for example. You can put your hands under the balls of your feet. That gives your wrists a nice stretch. Each one of these affects the legs differently. I personally like to put my hands behind my calves. This is a semi-inversion. Head lower than heart. This is not accessible because of eye or blood pressure issues do with your hands on a chair or even a table. And when you're ready, 
Come up very slowly, inhale halfway up, bring my hands to my thighs and bending my knees. Exhale, stay. Recalibration of your blood pressure, your heart rate, your nervous system. So you come to standing, which is a bit more sympathetic in your nervous system to stand. Then for a bend. And just take a moment and bring back your bhavana, whatever it is, that visualization, that mantra affirmation. Just visualize it as you rest your feet apart or together, your choice. You might, if you're visualizing a tree, you could make your arms part of that tree. For example, visualize a mountain. It's another nice one for grounding. And when you're ready, we move to our next balance. So I'm gonna have my blocks ready for this too. Okay, so we worked on what's often called warrior three, but in this case, it's just a variation of Tadasana, we could say, because we're not moving from a warrior position. So we're working on that. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to start from the ground and move up. Okay. So I want you to go into your one side of cord bend. So bring your feet back and step your left foot forward, your right foot turned out, and then decide where you want to go in this pose. Do you want to go all the way down? Do you want to use blocks or do you want to use the chair? Okay, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I'm going to start with the chair because I find that my students will want to do whatever I'm doing. So let's start with what's a little easier and then you can decide to make it harder if you want. Okay, so if you've got some blood pressure issues, you put those blocks here so your head's a little higher as well. Okay, so that's a, another possibility for you. And then from here, you're going to hopefully I have to move the chair away from the wall, but you're going to come up and see if you can bring your leg up and then down. We'll do it without the blocks. It'll be a little closer to the classical pose. I mean, up, just have to make sure you've got room. It's kind of nice to put your head on the seat of the chair. So this is Ekapada Uttanasana, it's called. One-sided forward bend. The classical is with your hands on the floor, move that chair to the wall for more stability. Try to square off those hips. When you release, something I learned in the West that they call it waterfall, it's quite nice. You bring that foot behind in a curtsy and then come up. Or if you want to be more classical, just bring it down behind you. And the full pose, you might have already given up. Just do a four then if you've had enough. <laughs> okay. So the full pose is with the blocks. It looks like this like this and I sometimes go as far as my fingertips and that's as far as I go and you could hold the back of your leg. All right, we're gonna do the other side. So come up um, more gracefully than I just did. So let's start in 
Harshva Uttanasana, right foot forward, left foot turned out. This is a challenge. I know for some of you, this is going to be a bit much, but <clears throat> if you use the chair, I hope it becomes accessible for all of you. Okay. So I'm going to show with the chair first. Inhale, arms coming up. Exhale, finding your forward bend. Inhale here. Exhale, stepping forward and trying to do a forward bend in this position. Now, you don't have to bring your leg up very far. Here, you can even have it down. And if it's too much to stay, just go up and down. Again, I like that cross behind. Or you just stay. I think my body's liking the chair version the best today, but I will try to show the gloss. Make sure you don't bump into your chair. And it's always every day a little bit different. Maybe you stay in the pose. Maybe you start to bring one leg, one hand behind and go more fully into it. It's a little harder. And when you're ready, step forward and come up. Try to be a little more graceful this time. We're gonna do one more round of this. I hope you're all still with me. You haven't given up. If it's too much, just do a regular forward bend or alternatively, if you wanna break, do forward bend with your back at the wall. Okay, just take a break for this next, next round, okay? So if you've had enough of that, just do a forward bend, back of the wall, etc. Okay, so pick your version. I'm gonna show with the blocks this time. Left foot forward, right foot back turned out. Inhale, arms coming up. Exhale, classically you find your full forward bend, whatever it is. I'm gonna use my blocks and then you inhale, come up. And exhale, forward bend to your place. You just stay here. If you can bring one or both hands behind. And if it's too much, you're feeling compression in the hip, which I certainly do sometimes when I do this, just take that break in between. Exhale down and inhale, extend. Maybe stay a breath. And when you're ready, let's step forward to Uttanasana. And inhale, coming up. We're gonna do the other side. Use whatever prop you want. Right foot forward, left foot turn it out. Inhale, arms coming up. Exhale, finding your pose. Parshva Uttanasana, one side at forward bend. Inhale, lift the chest, hands on the floor, use those blocks, whatever it is, and come forward. Inhale, stay. Exhale, release if you like. Inhale, stay if you want. Exhale. Stay a breath. You can move the back with the breath. Exhale, release. Or just keep in your forward bend. Maybe bring one or both hands behind. This is very strengthening for the whole leg and the hip, those hip stabilizers. And when you're ready, stepping forward, Uttanasana, stay in your forward bend, whatever it is, rest. And gradually come up. Focus on your bhavana as a, as a rest. 
We're going to take it down to the ground. You should feel quite grounded after that. So just notice your feet, your legs, you're probably feeling them quite a bit. Your ankles. Next week, we're going to move into the side body a bit more. Okay, balancing on the sides today. I wanted to keep it more like this. We're going to do the same thing on the floor. Feel that bhavana, infuse yourself like it, like putting a tea bag in hot water. Just imagine that tea being made. The bhavana is like that. It's infusing your whole system with an image, with an affirmation, a mantra. And breath is just natural. We're going to put our chair aside. We're going to transition to the ground. So, if you need to add any layers, so you might cool down a bit, do that. And just take your own time to transition to the floor. I think we're pretty good. I'm going to angle the camera down just a touch. Let you guys find your space. So last week we, I think we did this with blocks, but today I'm going to try just without blocks. You can use blocks under your thighs or knees if you want. Inhale, pointing the toes. Exhale, flex the toes towards the nose and pull up on those kneecaps. Again, you can do this with the layer blocks under the thighs or the knees. It makes it harder. It'll be a little easy on you after all that hard standing work we did. As you exhale, exhale from the pelvic floor up to the belly button. Feel the lower back go into the floor. Pull up on those kneecaps. Now, if you have hyperextension in your knees, do you put a layer of blocks or a blanket under the knees to avoid that hypermobility in that joint? If you don't have that issue, you can pull up on those kneecaps, lift the heels off the ground. Again, you can adjust those arms. You can bring your arms side rather than overhead. You can do angel arms. You can bring a bolster behind you. We do this with our feet turned out. So do Charlie Chaplin feet. And as you inhale, point the toes and exhale, flex. And I'm just going to rest my arms at the side during this one. You could move them up and down, angel arms, but I'm just going to stay here. Inhale, point. Exhale, flex. Stretching the front of the foot as you point and stretching and strengthening calves and into the knees as you flex. 
and the sole of the foot. Notice if one knee doesn't want to pull up, that's probably your weaker one. Okay, you can keep going back and forth between those two, or if you want a challenge, I'm just going to show the seated, but do it lying down. So you're going to inhale, point, and turn out. Exhale, flex, and turn in. Inhale, point, and turn out. Exhale, flex, and turn in. This is lubricating those knee joints. Inhale, point, turn out. Exhale, flex, turn in. So do this lying down. I'm showing it seated so you can see my feet better. And you can go the other direction. Inhale, point. Exhale, turn in and flex. Inhale, turn out and point, exhale together and flex. Inhale, turn out, point, exhale together and in. Okay, let's take a break. I think that was a bit much for some of you. I just saw you just looking at me. All right, so just lie down, take a rest. We're going to start adding some leg movement. So inhale. You're going to point your toes, bring both arms overhead. Exhale, draw one leg towards you and into your chest. It's getting into your lower back as well. Inhale, point and flex. Exhale, draw the other leg in, pulling up from the pelvic floor all the way to the belly button as the knee comes to the chest. So this is some of you have lower back stuff. This is for you, as well as still working with lubricating the knees, the ankles, the toes, all those joints being lubricated. Exhale, drawing in on the floor. You can fold your mat in two and have an exposed floor to dry your leg, or you can do it on a carpet or the mat, it does work. And inhale. If you want, you can flex your feet as you exhale, point as you inhale, or the opposite. Stretches the hips a bit too. And we're gonna move on. Exhale, you're gonna draw that one leg in towards your chest. I'm not gonna hold on to it this time, but you could. Inhale, bring the leg to the sky. If this is too much, bend the other leg. Might be easier for you. Exhale, bend that top leg to your chest. Inhale, extend. Exhale, the other side, draw the leg in. Inhale, extend it up. If it's too much, bend the opposite leg, put the foot on the ground. Exhale, bend the knee into the chest. And inhale, extend one leg over those both legs. Just keep that going. Exhale, draw in. Inhale, extend. This time I'm going to flex as I inhale and point as I exhale. Just do one more round, your own time. Okay. 
This is working the core strength a lot as well. If you really start moving from the pelvic floor to the belly button as you draw that leg in, especially. So hands down and relax, just rest for a moment. You might wanna think of a different bhavana now that you're lying down, you might be lying in tall grass or on sand or in water, some element of grounding. And you could say your affirmation if you have one or your mantra. So Sanskrit mantra Om Namo Namaha or Om Namo. That means I let go. Inhale, let, exhale, go is another way you could work with it. Just rest and bring that into your system, that bhavana. All right, bridge pose to be parapitam. So give you two options for the legs or three. One is no prop. Two, um, you could put a block or a pillow or even a bolster between your legs. Three, you could put a belt on your thighs and press out into the belt rather than in. So if you wanna work more on external rotation, if you have some tightness in your hips, you could try that, or if you want to work on strengthening those adductors, those inner thighs, you can try that. The inner thigh work can be very helpful for grounding for most people energetically and otherwise. And actually, I'm just going to start with that. Um, with what IQ, you could press out rather than press in if you prefer, if you're tighter in that area. So exhale, I want you to press into the block, contract the pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, and inhale, release. We're just gonna start with this. Exhale, press into the block, and contract from the pelvic floor to the belly button, inhale, release. And you might notice your pelvis is rocking a bit as you do this, it's tucking under as you exhale and releasing, walking forward as you inhale. Can you add a hold after exhale? And then release. Notice if one leg has a hard time pressing into the center, finding your mula, your root, from the belly button down to the pelvic floor, all the way down to the feet. Now we're working from the feet up to the belly button as we exhale.
Now to hold after exhale if you can, retract from the pelvic floor up. This exercise can also be used for any incontinence issues. Strengthen the pelvic floor, which is something unfortunately that happens as we age with women very commonly. So we're gonna now lift the hips up. The breathing and movement of the spine is a bit different because we're focusing more on the chest now rather than the lower back. You're gonna inhale, lift up as you expand into the chest and into the belly. And press into that block. Exhale, stay here, press in more. Inhale, lift a little higher and exhale, roll down. Again, you could be using a belt that you press out into rather than pressing in. It might feel better for your hips, depends on your anatomy. Inhale, what's going on for you? Exhale, stay. Press into the block as you exhale. Inhale, try to lift a little higher. Engage those glutes and exhale, come down. And if you like, as you exhale, come down, think of squeezing from the thighs to the pelvic floor to the stomach as you come down. Inhale from the chest to the belly, coming up. Exhale, squeeze in, pelvic floor to belly button. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, coming down. Squeezing that block. Last time, you might be feeling your um, hips working quite a bit. Inhale, lifting up as well as your core, I hope, and your legs and your feet. Exhale, squeeze from the knees to the thighs, to the pelvic floor, lower belly, stomach, belly button. Inhale, upper chest, lower chest, belly expanding as you lift up. You'll let go of that block a little bit as you lift up. Exhale, squeeze in again as you roll down and focus contracting from the legs to the pelvic floor, to the stomach, belly button, and rest. That's a lot of work on the legs. Let's stretch out those thighs because they've probably tightened a bit after all that. Inhale, center, and exhale, bring your knees to the side. Inhale, center, exhale, knees to the other side. Palms can be up or down, your choice. They can be any height, your arms. You can also, if you're feeling uncomfortable in your pelvis, you can try with your legs together. That might feel better if in your body and it might target a different part of your hip. You wanna stretch so you can play with having the feet different distances apart. You can also just work one knee at a time coming down and reach that knee towards the big toe. That really targets that thigh that might be tight, quads after doing the bridge. That last pose also is very strengthening for the hamstrings. And if some of you are working with that, so just a reminder. And we're gonna do one more set of bridge. This time we're gonna do an ekapada or one footed version. It's often called marching bridge and fitness classes. Inhale coming up, You've done that. Exhale, stay. Now, their arms, I personally recommend doing this with a mat because it is a little challenging without, I have to say, but 
I'm going to do my best. Inhale, lifting up to the sky with one leg, if you can. Exhale, bend it in and come down. You could bring the hips all the way down or stay up. I think it's easier to stay up. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, coming down. Just do this. This is too much, just do regular bridge up and down. This is to strengthen one hip at a time. It's too much to lift the leg all the way. You can just bend it, bend the leg. You can just bend the knee. Or you can bring the leg in front and you can even use the wall for support. Maybe that's easier for you, it depends. You want to combine and work a little harder. Inhale up, exhale, bend the knee in. Inhale, extend out, exhale down. So you can try that. This is the hardest version. Inhale up, exhale, bend. Inhale, extend, exhale down. This is also strengthening that lower back a lot. Inhale up, exhale, bend. Inhale, extend, exhale down. One more, inhale up, exhale bend. Inhale, extend, exhale down. Last time. And when you're ready, lifting up, inhale. Notice where you feel it and exhale coming down. So you might feel that in your lower back. If your lower back is your weaker part, you might feel it in your hips. And yes, we are doing a counter pose. So if you could, um, some of you anyway, grab a block or a pillow and put it underneath your lower back as high as your waist, not higher. And bring your knees into your chest, hug your knees. You could do one leg at a time if you prefer. And when you're doing the one leg at a time, the other foot could be on the ground. Make pada apanasana. I'm going to go into the Moving version of the pose, inhale, knees away from you, exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, draw the knees towards the chest, and use your hands just lightly to extend that exhale. Inhale, from your chest to your belly as your knees move away. Exhale, apana meets prana, exhale, pelvic floor, Lower belly, belly button in, chest falls. Inhale, prana meets apana. Inhale, upper chest, middle chest, lower chest, full belly expanding. Pause, keep this going. You can add a hold after exhale if you like. Hold after exhale two to five seconds. And then inhale, release. Keep this going your own timing. This is Apanasana. It works on the Apana Vayu, the downward flow of energy. By adding this block, I'm inc increasing that effect and increasing the stretch of the lower back as a counter to what we just did. This is another good one for incontinence. Semi-inversion here. I'm doing that ujjayi pranayama whenever I can, constricting the throat. You might just stay in the pose now. You can hold on top of the knees or underneath. 
You can always do one side at a time if your hip or lower back is compressed on the other side, you can do one side at a time. I've just started bringing this back into my practice. And I was like, yeah, that's a good, good variation to do if your hip is bothering you from compressed or your lower back. When you're ready, bring your legs up to the sky. We leave this block underneath, or you can remove it. Removing it is going to make the next part harder, but this will make it easier. So this is working on core strength. So your legs are up to the sky. And step one is easier. You're going to inhale, bring one leg down a little bit or a lot. And exhale, move from the pelvic floor up to the belly button as you bring the leg up. Now you can add the arms overhead. Actually, this should make it a little bit easier. It changes the, the balance point, the fulcrum. So you don't have to move it very much. You can move it just a little bit. You can always bend the knees if straight legs is not an option, or you can come all the way down. Urfa Prasrita Badasana. This is a Kapata version, one-sided version. I'm shaking as I draw my leg up because my core is doing the work. Now, if you're very unstable in your core, you might decide to move only on exhale, which is um, completely done in Chennai. Um, for more stability. Mr. Angar teaches the same and Desi Char did the same. So you can always just move on exhale if you want. If moving on inhale feels un too unstable, just take a breath in between and just move on exhale. Now, if you want to challenge yourself more, you can stay a breath or two at the bottom here. But I even sometimes inhale, open my legs and exhale, draw them to the center to play with the transversus abdominis, the way it's across the lower belly. I think that this feels like it gets into that to me. I have to ask my physio friends about that. You've had enough, take a rest or just stay with your legs up to the sky and just do Viparita Kani if you've had enough. So you don't want to over fatigue yourself. You want to work until you're working to about 70-80% of your capacity. You don't want to move into fatigue. You'll know when you're done, take a break. But you also want to be challenged and some of your have been with me quite a while. So try and give you a bit of challenge. When you're ready, coming up. And just stay here as you exhale, bring your legs towards your face. Inhale, legs to the sky. Exhale, legs towards your face. This is like doing a seated forward bend, Paschimottanasana, but with, from an inversion. Gives you the same action with spine. You could even hold the backs of your legs to increase the effect. Be careful. You can just use the thighs. You might stay there or just keep it moving. Having this block just helps you get into the pose a little bit more, hopefully. You might even hold your feet. And when you're ready, gradually coming out of the pose. And just gonna finish with leg stretches with our belt. So grab your belt. I'm gonna have one foot on the wall. One foot could be bent alternatively. Loop 
the belt on the ball of my foot. And I bring my hands through the loop and palms to the sky and hold the loop. It really doesn't matter how you hold the loop. Some people like to hold with one hand as well, which is more classical because the classical pose is holding your big toe. Eka Pada, one foot at Padan Gustasana. And this is a supta version. You can do this standing, believe it or not. We worked towards that today when we were doing those leg lifts. So that would move into this pose standing, believe it or not. But I am not going to be doing that with you. It's a lot. So we're going to give those legs a nice stretch because we worked them a lot today, those four legs. Let's give them a nice stretch. And I think you can probably just stay here now. If it doesn't feel good staying or if you've got some knee issues, as you exhale, bend that knee. You can leave your foot at the sky or bring it down. So people prefer that. I like leaving it up. And then inhale, straighten. Or just stay here and breathe. And one last piece if you want. Be careful for your neck. Exhale, you could lift your head up towards your knee. Hold after exhale or not, and inhale down. This is strengthening those neck flexors, the front of the neck, the throat area. Also said to stimulate the thyroid gland. For those of you with thyroid issues, this might be helpful. It's contraindicated for some neck problems, so be careful, make sure you can do it. If you're in pain in your neck, I don't recommend doing this. And switching sides. You might choose a different variation for the side if you let this leg feels different. That opposite leg can be bent. You can have a bolster under it or um, a pillow to relax the leg or push that foot into the wall. So bend, inhale, straighten or just stay. Stretching the calves, the hamstrings, bottom of the foot. Use for plantar fasciitis problems, the stretch could be helpful, especially with pointing and flexing the foot. Maybe adding the head coming up as you exhale, maybe a hold after exhale. Both legs to the sky. If you like, if you're using a belt or a scarf, you can make it a little bigger. Do a namaste position and just bring your hands towards your heart if that's comfortable. Just hang out there for a rest. These inversions are very relaxing. They put us into a relaxation response, parasympathetic nervous system. Simple way to relax the body mind. When you're ready, just lying in Shavasana, relaxation for a moment. Put something under your thighs if you like, or lay straight. If your back is not comfortable with your legs straight, you can put a bolster or a layer of blocks or a pillow under your thighs so to get comfortable. We're going to be here just for about three to five minutes. Just a rest.
We'll be bringing that bhavana, that supine bhavana that we brought in, maybe lying in water or on a forest bed. Or in a field of grass, wildflowers, or perhaps in sand, some pleasing grounding image. Maybe saying an affirmation of grounding to yourself. Starting to increase the length of your breath, or you can stay another five minutes during our closing breathing and meditation. Starting to move the body, hands, feet coming back into your space. Turning to one side if it's comfortable on the right. Exposing the left side, which is our moon side, receptive side. And coming up to see the position. Right. Use a block, set up the wall, back the wall, put blocks under your legs. And sit on a chair. I'm just going to do a simple pranayama to close. Inhale, Ujjayi pranayama through both nostrils. Exhale, Mariki Mudra, or just doing that beak with your hand. Exhale through the left nostril. Fully closing the right nostril, half closing the left if you can. Inhale both nostrils, Ujjayi Pranayama, constricting the throat. And exhale, right nostril. This is called Anuloma Ujjayi Pranayama. 
This is for grounding, for relaxation. For stress, anxiety. One, you can add a hold after exhale. Same length as your exhale or half the length. That will extend the exhalation relaxation effect. Possibly it's just the right hand that's used. I use both hands to work with bilateral movement of body and brain. And just finishing up your last round. If you're doing this at home, classically we do 12, 12 rounds. One round is left and right. Just closing, bringing the hands to the heart. Thank you very much.